So this one is the fundamental theorem of calculus, the second part. So you notice here the this, you cancel this. If this was just x, you pretty much just write this there. But since this is not x, this will be equals to sine square. And whatever there is a t, you just replace the limit. So this will be secant x, okay? And then on the bottom, this will be uh, secant square x plus a. And then times the derivative with respect to x of secant, which is what? Then minus, this will be the same thing, but since you're going to multiply times 0, this is not going to be here. So what's the derivative of secant, people? Is what? Secant x tangent x, right? And all of this divided by secant squared x plus a. And that's it. This part, you're going to do the same thing, and you're going to substitute 1, but the derivative of 1 is what? 0, right? So everything times 0 is going to disappear. So you want to end up with this only. So again, look, all you do is you replace whatever there is a t, you put the limit. See, that's exactly what we did here, see? And then multiply by the derivative of the, the limit, which is this. So the derivative of this gives you that. That's it. Okay. Now, you only do that for the fundamental theorem of calculus, the second part, according to the book, if you have the derivative and the integral. This one is just a plain, plain derivative, OK? So this is a product. So you have to use the product rule. So it's the derivative of the first one. So let me just write it out times the second one plus the derivative of the second one, okay, times the, the first one. Okay, we have done this multiple times, so this is just to purge your memory. What's the derivative of tangent uh, to begin with? Should be secant square, right? times the derivative of the inside, which is what? 10, 10 x. And all of this is divided by e to the cosine kx. Now, what is the derivative of the second one? Anybody, what is it? Yeah, so it's e to the cosine kx first, you're right, times negative sine <coughs> kx times k, actually, okay? And then times tangent of phi x squared, okay? Now, since for something like this, you don't have to find the critical points or anything like that, you can just leave it like this, but you can clean it out a little bit, so you can factor the e to the cosine kx from the whole thing, and this will give you 10x secant square of phi x square, and then minus uh, k tangent of phi x square times sine of kx, and that's it. But again, you don't have to go that far. For the test, this will be enough. If you had to find the critical point, then you would have to go farther. What about number two? This is just antiderivatives. What's the antiderivative of this? It will be seven x to the four over four, right? What about the next one? It will be two x to the negative five plus one over negative five plus one. And what's the antiderivative of, uh, of minus cotangent and cosecant? Is just what? Plus uh, cosecant, right? The derivative of cosecant is minus cotangent cosecant, so this will give you this part, and then plus c. And then you simplify, so this will be 7 fourths x to the 4, and then this is going to be plus 2x to the negative 4 over negative 4. 
plus cosecant x plus c and then this power how much is that how much is 2 divided by negative 1 4 negative 1 half and that's it okay all right so for part b and part c you need to use the substitution method so here, notice that the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So therefore, we're going to pick u to be tangent. So therefore, the u will be secant squared x dx. Okay? And then remember, this is going to give you one of the five fundamental integrals that I gave you last time. So this is the same thing as u q is this part u q and the u now what is the integral of u q will be one to the four u to the four right i mean one over four u to the four plus c but how much was u it was tangent And I told you, you want to verify that this is the right answer. Just take the derivative of this, and it should give you this, which it does. So you should, you should check. Okay? Now, for uh, part C, U should be X to the 4. How much is the U? It's 4X Q. And notice that this gives you this part right here. Let me highlight and say this, and this is this part. And then here you have the e to the u. So this is the same thing as e to the u du. But there is one thing that is out of place, what isn't, or that is missing, the four, right? So how do you get rid of the four? One over four. So then this will be one four. The integral of e to the u is just e to the u. But what was u was x to the four. And again, you check by taking the derivative of this and the chain rule, it will give you exactly this. Well, that's how you know that's the answer, yes. So basically whatever you make u, like say like x to the power three and dx, you get rid of that in the integral. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's why you are substituting to change from x to u, but you cannot change what you have here. So this has to stay the same. Okay. So this gives you an x to the four, which was not there. So that's why it has to divide by one four. Okay. All right. So here, uh, u is going to be four x why because when you square you need to get this part so if u is equal to 4x then du will be what uh, 4 only right but u square is equal to 16 x squared right now when you rewrite this notice that the du it gives you a for the x, but you don't have four. You have, uh, what do you have? You have a dx, but you only get four. So how do you think you can fix that? Before you were divided, now you just multiply. So it's multiplied by two, okay? And then on the bottom, this will be one plus u squared. Now the integral of du over one plus u, that's one of the five integrals I told you to memorize. So this will be just two tangent inverse of u plus c. So this is two tangent inverse of what? Uh, 4x. That's it. What is the domain? The domain, since this is a polynomial, right? The graph for x q, when we did this in precalculus, you only look to the biggest power. This is going to look like that. The point is that the domain is from minus infinity to, to infinity, right? And the y-intercept, remember, just means x equals to, to 0. So if x equals to 0, what will be the value for y? 2. two. 
that's it. Okay. Now, what is this increasing? What is this decreasing? Well, how much is S prime? It's going to be 3 x squared minus 1. x minus 6, right? Okay. Now, uh, this one, you cannot uh, use the quadratic formula. So, F prime equals to 0. Just use the quadratic formula and you will get this should be 1 plus or minus the square root of 72 divided by 6, okay? which is uh, pretty much like 1.59 and minus 1.226. Okay? So then just draw the, the line we did before. You have 0 here. 1.59 should be somewhere here. And minus 1.26 is somewhere here. Remember, these are the critical points. This is where, remember, the derivative is 0. Remember why I did these lines before? Um, professor, yes? I got square root of 73 instead of 72. Uh, yes, this should be 73. Okay, But this doesn't change this. How do we check what is increasing and decreasing? Well, just pick a number and just plug it into the derivative, right? If we put zero in the derivative, what will we get? If you plug in zero in here, is this positive or is this negative? Negative. Negative, okay? So that means it's decreasing between here and here, okay? And then let's say that you pick here, I don't know, two, or two, let's say four, okay? This is positive, uh, this is negative, but if you compute the whole thing, it's going to be positive. You should check on that, but it will be positive in here. So that means it's going up. Okay? And then if we pick, uh, let's say, minus 4, then this one will still be positive. This is going to be positive. So the whole thing is going to be positive. So then it's going to increase like this. Which, again, it should not be surprising because x cubed, remember, is supposed to look something like, like this. Right? So now, based on this, you can tell right away that this is going to be the max and it's going to be the, the minimum. But it's asking you what is this increasing and what is this decreasing. So increasing will be from where to where? Minus infinity to what? Uh, minus 1.26. Or, what else? 1.59 to infinity, right? And decreasing, it will be from where to where? Minus 1.26 to 1.59. That's it. That okay? All right, so which one is the maximum? The maximum is going to be whatever f of minus 1.26 is. And then just use the calculator. So this will be the, the maximum, and the minimum will be f of 1.59. Okay. And uh, I computed this. This is 6.77, and this is minus 4.78. Again, in the exam, we're going to be whole numbers, so you should not worry about this. OK? All right now, what about the? Points of inflation. First of all, what is an inflation point? Well, inflation point is where the second derivative is, is zero. So what will be the second derivative here? 6x minus 1, right? <clears throat> so therefore, that the second derivative equals to zero means that 6x has to be 1 or that x has to be 1, 6. Okay? And then remember at 1, 6. Uh, by the way, how much is 1 over 6? Just use the calculator. How much is that? One, it's point 0.1. What is it? Uh, 1 over 6. So it's 0 0.1667, something like that. Okay? 
or let's say this is 0.17. All right, so remember, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to check in here and in here. If we pick, let's say, uh, 0 on this side, what well, is the second derivative positive or negative? Negative. negative. What does negative mean? From k what? Down, which is that this, right? And then if we pick, I don't know, 1, is this going to be positive or negative? Positive. So it's going to be concave up. Okay. So concavity, well, concave down from where to where? Minus infinity to 1, 6. <coughs> and concave up from 1, 6 to infinity. Okay. The only reason why I ask you that, I don't think that I'm asking you to do the graph, but uh, 0.6 is somewhere here. Okay. So you want to have a precise graph, you can see here this. This is concave down. It gets to the inflation point, and then it goes concave up. So, okay? All right, so there's no space for four. So we do number four at the, the end. Number five, you have a cylindrical can which looks like this. Okay? And then... Uh, Obviously, you have uh, the radius, which is going to be called just R. And it says, it gives you a volume already, so the volume doesn't, doesn't change. So the volume is equal to what? For a can is pi R square H. Okay? And then uh, find the dimensions that will minimize the cost of the metal, if the top uh, and bottom is 2.5 is more expensive than the size. So you need a formula for the, the surface area. So the surface area is what? It's a, the surface area is 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r square. This part is the side right here, and this is the top and the top and bottom. Okay, so remember pi r square is the area of a circle, so two pi r square means it's the top and the bottom. Okay? Then the cost, which is what you're trying to minimize, the cost is going to be uh, uh, two pi r h plus 2.5 times 2 pi r square. Where did the 2.5 came from? Of course, it tells you it's five ti uh, 2.5 times more, more expensive, right? And then, therefore, C is going to be 2 pi r h plus 5 pi r square. All right, so first, find the critical points. So what will be the derivative of, of this? Okay. What is it? But before we do that, there is an issue here. We have two variables. So we have to change it to one variable only. So how do we change it to one variable only? We haven't used the volume, which is right here. Okay, so the volume is right here. So if we solve for which one? For H. H is going to be B, which is a constant. Why is a constant? Because it says has a constant volume, so it cannot change, divided by par r, pi r squared. So therefore, before we do the, the derivative, you have to change it to, uh, to one variable only. So therefore, c is going to be a 2 pi r, and then h is going to be b over pi r squared. When it comes to this, it's better to simplify as much as you can before you take the derivative. So notice that this is the same thing as 2b over r, okay, plus 5 pi r squared. When it comes to taking derivatives, 2b over r is better to write it like this because the, 
the, the variable is r, okay? So now we can take the derivative. What will be the derivative of this? So let's do this part first. What will be the derivative of that? Minus what? What is it? Right? What's going? What is that? Minus two what? It will be minus two b r to the negative two plus ten pi r. Okay. All right. So then, um, remember you can you should factor the the smallest uh, exponent. So the exponent uh, the GCF here is actually two uh, r to the negative two. And this will be times what? Phi pi r q. Let me make sure that's right. Okay. And then minus what? Just b. Yes, no? So therefore, what does this mean from here? This cannot be zero. Why? because it's on the bottom, so it will be undefined if r is equal to zero, but if r is equal to zero, there is no, no cylinder. So that means that phi pi r q minus b has to be zero, which means that r q has to be b divided by phi pi, okay? Which means that r is the q rule of b over phi pi. And this already looks pretty the nasty, but it is what it is. So this is the first dimension. And the second one, we're gonna plug it in here. And on the test, you can just do this. B, this is pi, and then R, just literally do this part. Look. You don't have to simplify more than this. And that's the, the dimensions for the height. And that's it. So this one, you take the limit, this will be one minus one over uh, zero, which is technically zero over zero, right? So you can use L'Hopital's rule. So then this will be the limit as x goes to zero. What derivative of cosine is minus phi sine phi x, and then this is equals to nine, right? And then this will give you zero over nine, which is zero, that's it. That's the limit. Now, we talked about this one before. You don't have to do this from scratch. Remember, this is one of the limits that you need to memorize for the rest of your lives. Remember the limit of this. Uh, where A is a constant. Remember, this is equals to E to the A. This is one of the most famous limits. If there's only one thing you remember from calculus one is that just remember that limit, you'll be okay. People will believe you that you do calculus one. All right, so then what do you think is the answer here? E to the minus M. That's it. Technically, you use L'Hopital rules to get there, but that's what it is. Now, part C, you can do it the way we did at the very beginning where you factor things, or you can just use L'Hopital's rule too. So if you plug in phi, you're gonna end up with zero on the bottom, and on the top is also gonna be uh, also zero, okay? So by L'Hopital's rule, again, you can also just factor, okay? What is the derivative of the top? Yeah, it's 2x minus 3, and the bottom is what? 2x. So then this will be what? 10 minus 3 is 7, right? Divided by what? 10. That's the limit. Now, like I, like I said at the beginning of the semester, you factor this, x minus 5, x plus 2. This is how we did it before we knew about L'Hopital's rule. And notice that this 
will cancel that. So then if you plug in a five, well, this will give you seven. And it will give you five. Now you cannot do that. You cannot do this trick in here or here, but you can do it that way too. And then in number seven says find y prime. So find y prime. So this is number seven. So using implicit differentiation. What will be the derivative? What's the derivative of sine? Is what cosine y squared times. What's the derivative of y squared? Two y times y. Y prime. Okay. So don't forget the y prime. That's the x13. What's the derivative of minus 2x? Negative 4x. This will be 0. And then what? Minus 6y squared times what? y prime, right? And then what's the last thing you do? Just combine the y primes. So therefore, y prime. Uh, it's going to be 2y cosine y squared plus 6y squared. And all of this will be equals to 4x. This is just factoring. And then just divide. So y prime is equals to 4x divided by 2y cosine plus 6y squared. That's it. Okay. Any, any questions on that? Yes. How did you combine the, the, both the y primes? Just move it to the same side. So this is negative. When I move it to this side, it's going to become positive, right? And this one is negative. I move it to the other side, it becomes positive. And then just factor it. Yes. Can you simplify further by taking out the 2s and the 4? Yeah, yeah. You can uh, factor the 2 here. Actually, you can factor 2y. And then this will be cosine y squared plus 3y. And then you can do this. OK? All right, this one, by the way, you don't have to do it a long way. OK, it doesn't say that. It says the fundamental theorem of calculus, which means plugging in the limits. You just have to recognize the, the function clearly. Which function is this one? X squared. X squared. You, recognize, you don't recognize that. But you recognize the Kardashians, there is a problem in life, OK? So you need to know what this is. Okay? All right, so therefore, this is the integral from where to where, though. Uh, 1 to 3, OK? And then this is x squared dx. This is equals to 1 over 3 x cubed from 1 to 3. So then by the fundamental theorem of calculus, this will be 3q, right? Minus 1q, OK? So then this is 1 third times what? 27 minus 1. So this is just 26 over 3. That's it. This is how you should do this. Just do the x squared and the x separate, OK? And forget about just, well, not the limits. The limits are important. But do each of them separate, OK? For this one, for all of them, uh, A and B is going to be the same. All right, so this one, I'm going to do this and this separate on the side. We're going to use the same uh, delta, which is going to be 2 over n, and xi, which is, remember, a plus i times delta x, which will give you this. So let's focus on this one first. The uh, rectangle, remember, is f of x times x, which it will give you uh, um, 2i n square, y square, because this one is square, times delta x. And you simplify as much as you can right, right now. Okay? So then by definition, this is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum of the rectangles, which we already find in here. OK? Remember, take out the, the n. So this will be uh, a over n q, the sum from i equals to 1 to n of i squared. 
and this is where we need the, the formula for this. Remember the the exponents have to match. If they don't match, you did something something wrong. So in this case, what is the sum of i square? What is it? Times two over six. Okay. You technically only care about the nq, and nq is going to be this times that times this. Okay. So notice that this is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity. On the top is going to be 16 nq plus more stuff, which will not matter. And on the bottom, this is 6 nq. And notice that they have the same uh, same exponent. So therefore, this is just 16 over 6 or a over 3. That's it. So that's the area for the square. OK? All right, so we're going to do the same thing for x. Uh, for this one, the rectangle is going to be now what? Well, this one should be a little bit easier. It's going to be just uh, two n over two i over n, sorry, times two over n, which is what four i over n square. Okay. Why do we use this part only? Because this is just x, right? If it was q, you would have to put a q here and so forth. So therefore, the integral is going to be the limit now as n goes to infinity, or the sum from i equals to 1 to n of 4 over n squared i. We do the same trick. You uh, take out the 4 over n squared. It will be the sum from i equals to 1 to n. Now, what is the, the sum of i? is uh, n times n plus 1 over 2, right? And again, all you care is about this. So this is technically just 4 over four over 2, which is what? 2, okay? So once you uh, find those values, then this is going to be minus, what was the answer for x squared? And then plus 6. What was the answer for uh, x? Two. two, right? So this is just minus a over three plus 12, whatever that is, and that's it.